Hey guys, it's me again, Sky, and welcome to another video. So today I was actually asked to do something pretty cool, and I'm gonna go over some technology. I'm actually hoping to do this for a few different pieces of technology. You might have seen if you follow any of my blogs on Low Vision Technology website that I have gotten a few new pieces of technology for university, for using at school, and I was hoping that these could be useful for anyone to be able to use when they're in the classroom, whether it be high school or junior high. Really everything I'm going to go over today is pretty useful for anyone with low vision. And it would be really beneficial, I thought, to know kind of the ins and outs of all the new stuff that's coming out right now. There's a lot of cool stuff out there. And it's kind of confusing and hard to actually understand how it works. Believe me, it's taken me some time. So I hope that this is helpful and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So I guess without further ado, let's get into it. Today, what we're going over is actually something called the eBot Pro. The eBot, for those of you who don't know, is a camera and CCTV device kind of compacted into one but it's also very portable so for those with low vision you probably know that both the camera and CCTVs are very large devices. The ones that I had when I was young were usually a single device that took up a whole entire desk, especially CCTVs even nowadays. So the cool thing about this little camera, well it's at least small enough that you can transport it on your own and bring it from class to class with reasonably little effort. It sets up pretty fast and I think you guys are gonna like it, hopefully. I think it's pretty cool. So I guess I'll show you how it works. All right, so first and foremost, this is the camera device, the actual device that we're gonna go over today. This device is pretty cool. Some of the things it can do is it can read text out to you with the CCTV function. It can also view things long distance or short distance, which is pretty neat. It has a built-in light. It's very customizable. So it does come with a few really cool things. Of course, this is the actual camera device, as I've said. I have it plugged in right now to its power cord, and you're going to see that the power is plugged in right here in this little device. So after the power, you guys are going to notice that there are a few other inputs over here. There's something for HDMI, which is really important, along with some USB kind of stuff for different ways to connect this to different screens and monitors. I actually use, um, to connect this, the Wi-Fi setting. And at the very back here, you're gonna see that there is a little switch. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, right here. And it's gonna be really small writing, so I'd suggest either using a magnifier or getting someone who can see a bit better to be able to read this to you. But when the switch is turned to the right, it means that your Wi-Fi is on, and if it's turned to the left, your Wi-Fi is off. So that's important to know if we're gonna use the Wi-Fi setting on this. The Wi-Fi means that you can connect to things without any cords, which is very nice, of course, because we all know the more cords on your desk, the worse things are, organizing and all that good stuff. Also on the back here, you're gonna have a little dial for sound because this does actually have sound and, and talks to you if you'd like it to. And also as an earphone jack because we don't want it to be talking to everyone in the classroom, do we? So of course at the front, you're gonna see this part right here is actually the camera. And first things first, when you set this up, you actually need to manually set the arm up um, the first ways before it'll do the rest digitally, so I'll show you what I mean by that. So at the top, there's a power button on this grid that had everything on it, all the inputs. There's a power button at the top of it, and then at the bottom of the top part, there's another button. It's a lighter, and this button is actually to turn on the light for the CCTV reading function. So that's useful if you're reading something and it's in a dark room, it's gonna make the camera work a bit better for you. Also, I thought I'd just mention that this camera does come with a carrying case. It's actually pretty compact, as you see the way that the camera folds down and it fits into the case. And it came, for me, it came with earphones, it came with an HDMI cord, it came with a charger, and it came with just an instruction booklet manual of how to use the camera. And it's pretty big, so there's a lot to learn. So this is useful if you're going to carry this around to different classes. Honestly, I've had a lot worse, so just so you can really quickly see, you know, it's not actually that huge, so that's nice. Alright, so first things first, when we set this guy up, 
you are first going to lift up this main head camera part and you do do that manually and then once it's kind of up like this in a more or less 90 degree angle you're going to see the button here that's right behind the actual block with the battery and the power button and all that stuff and you're going to see this button here connected to the arm you're going to want to press it down until you hear it click and then you can manually maneuver this arm up and then you want your camera to drop over the side. You're going to push this arm to the right until you feel it kind of click back into place. And then it'll lock itself. So this is the point right now where we're done doing everything manually. Now we have to actually turn the camera on and let it do its thing. So I'll show you that right now. I showed you the power button before. You're going to want to hold that down for a few seconds and then you're going to hear it start up. This camera should have flipped by itself automatically and got to this position right here. And you're gonna see mine actually has a light going on it right now. So the light function is just right under the button that's the power on and off at the top of the power block over here. But this is what you want your camera to look like um, when it's fully set up or started. I have mine, as I said, plugged in. You can have it plugged in, or you can have the battery taken out of it and just have it plugged into power without a battery. This will run with or without the battery as long as you have it plugged in, but of course you can't always have these cameras plugged in, so just always make sure to have your battery charged if you're gonna use it. Something really important about the batteries too is that if you let them get too low and die, the charging takes a really, really long time. I believe it's if it gets below 5%, you need to charge it for at least four hours to make sure that it will start up again next time you use it. And if it's below 5% for over, I think it's two to three months, then you're gonna wanna charge it for a full 24 hours before you're able to start it up and use it. So that's really important to keep in mind that this thing needs to probably be charged properly every night to make sure it's functioning when you're using it. Now that we have our camera set up, we're gonna go and actually hook it up to the laptop. Now, there's a few different ways to hook this up. For me, of course, I use it with a laptop, and you can, I believe, use Mac or PC. I use a PC, Asus, and you can either do it by hooking in a USB connection, or you can use an HDMI cable and hook it up to your laptop. Or, what I like to do is you can use wireless and hook it up with Wi-Fi to a laptop. I find that really, really the most helpful. Wireless is awesome and it, it works really well for me. You know, the less cords the better. So that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do today, hook it up wirelessly. Because the other ones are pretty straightforward. You just need to hook up the cord to the power block on the bottom of the camera and then to whatever you're hooking it up to. The Wi-Fi is a teeny bit more complicated so we'll go through that. So I just want to let you guys know before I really start hooking the laptop and connecting it to the eBot Pro. I have Zoom Text on my laptop and I'm sure a lot of you will have magnification software. I have Zoom Text Fusion and Zoom Text Fusion does not work with the eBot software. The eBot software is going to come with a disk that downloads the program that is used to run this actual eBot and the software does not play well with Zoom Text as of now, but I believe that is a problem that hinges the actual company that made these eBot and is making these cameras and stuff is trying to work out, and so is Zoom Text. So sometimes you're gonna find that is just life, things don't always connect and work properly. So what I do is I turn Zoom Text off before I start this whole process of connecting the two just to make sure everything is going to run smoothly. In this case, Zoom Text probably wouldn't be helpful, especially also because if I'm reading text, the camera can zoom in on it, and so we don't need Zoom Text to do that. So yes, turn Zoom Text off, and then make sure that you have the program for the eBot installed in your computer if you're doing it the wireless way. Something important to note about that that I actually messed up on is when you're installing the program, you don't want to connect or plug in the eBot to your computer until the program prompts you to at the end of installation. If you don't plug in the eBot when the program prompts, then you're going to have a lot of issues. You're going to have to uninstall the program, reinstall it, and plug things in at the proper time. So just keep that in mind. Right now we're assuming that you have the eBot up and you have your computer running and you don't have a Zoom text or screen magnification software running on here. It's probably going to provide you with the desktop shortcut when you install the program to run this. 
and for me it just says eBot. Once the eBot is on, you're going to want to go and you're going to want to click into that program, so I'm going to do it right now. So automatically what happens is I get a big huge button in the middle of my laptop screen that says Wi-Fi. I can show it to you guys actually. It's going to look like that. And before I proceed any further, on the very back of the eBot, I think I described to you guys there where all the volume and headphone jacks and stuff are. There is a switch that is Wi-Fi, and I'm going to turn that to the right. And there you go, to just denounce that the Wi-Fi is on. So now I want to hook up my computer to the Wi-Fi, I want to connect it wirelessly. And that's as simple as going into your wireless connections and finding the eBot Wi-Fi that your own eBot is going to send out and connecting to it. The only negative or downside to this is that you're going to have to disconnect from whatever Wi-Fi that you're on when you're using the eBot to connect to the eBot's Wi-Fi. So I'm just going to do that right now. So for me, the Wi-Fi is called eBot 0880. That's just, it, yours is going to look something like that if you're connecting to the network. So I'm going to I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click connect. So I'm now connected to the eBot Wi-Fi. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and click on this really big button. Um, if I can find the mouse, I'm sure every low vision person can relate. And I'm going to actually click there connect and you should see a screen similar to this and there we go so now we're actually the e is working it is viewing a sticker on my laptop I think now we are connected we have the feed from the eBot going right to the laptop, which is exactly what we want. So right now, we are in the CCTV or reading mode. This is for reading documents that we place on here. And I have had this actually just for showing you guys for viewing purposes, I've had it turned the wrong way. You actually want it, I believe, turned like this, if that makes sense, so the long way, so that the camera is kind of coming towards you and the board is coming towards you in a longer stretch. This is in close viewing mode. So next thing I'm going to touch with you guys on is the actual remote that comes with the eBot. And it looks like this, pretty simple, nice big buttons, lots of contrast. On the back there's going to be a little on off switch and you don't want to leave the remote on all the time because it'll of course kill your batteries. The eBot Pro does come with the batteries that come in this. I believe they're AAAs. So we're just going to turn that switch on. And now we have our little remote working. What's cool about this is as I press the little switch here, I can move the head of the camera around. So that's useful if I'm actually reading a document or a paper here. I can move it around and see what I'm reading on the screen, which is really nice. So I have the user's manual right here, and I'm going to just put it to a random page, and we're going to use the eBot to see it. Never grab the head and try to position it manually, that's not smart. You're going to want to use the remote for everything that you're doing with this guy. This has a different color scheme that you can change it to different background and foreground colors, whatever is easier for you to read. So it's going to be the mode button on the remote. It's to the right and the second from the bottom button. I can press it and you can, you're going to hear the eBot actually read the different colors to me. Natural color. There we go. White on black. Black on white. So you have all sorts of different cool colors, and this isn't just for reading, it's also for camera viewing. If you want to see your front board and you want to see it with the black on white, you can do that. So that's super cool. The other buttons on this remote, you have a menu button, which is going to bring you to a big menu. You can also pull it up by right clicking with your mouse on your laptop. The menu is really customizable. You have all sorts of stuff you can go through, like the volume, the different tones and sounds this is making. Next, I'm going to say there's a big plus and minus button to the the left second from the bottom and you can press that to zoom your camera zoom arrow. So you're gonna hear it read how far you're zoomed in. Next thing I'm gonna show you guys is something that I think you're gonna find really really cool. On the bottom most left button you're gonna see uh, something that's called OCR and technically what this does is it's gonna let you guys take a photo of whatever you're viewing and it's gonna read it to you. It's actually pretty much text to speech, which is so cool. And I'm gonna show you an example of that right now. What you're gonna do is, as long as you have your document and it's 
positioned properly so that the camera can see everything, you're going to press the OCR button and the camera is going to position itself to take a photo. And then, as the device said, you press again to capture and you guys are going to get to listen to what it says. So right now, it's just taking a picture. You don't want to move anything, of course, when it is taking this picture. I believe it's making a PDF for itself or something similar. So on my screen right now, there's a bar and it's just reading. Page 25, Jamie and Ben are on TF144.3.2, installing the back of the program and insert the PCM back installation CD and open, finder, and select the CD drive. So I could let it keep going, but I'm not going to because that would take a while. But yes, as you just saw, it just took a picture of the page and it read all of that text out to you, which is amazing. I'm sure you guys can tell how helpful that will be. You're gonna wanna go back now, so just press the OCR button again to get into your normal viewing mode you were in before. So that's all close viewing mode, which is all good and well, but this is also a camera for far viewing modes. So at the very top of the remote, there's gonna be a button on the left that says near, and there's gonna be a button on the right that says far. I'm just gonna show you guys right here. Hopefully you can see that. So we're gonna go to far viewing mode because right now we're in near, we're gonna press the far and look what happens. So here we are. It just positioned itself all the way up here. Now it's far viewing mode. And I know you might not be able to see perfectly, but it's displaying now things far away in this room on the laptop screen, just like it was displaying the words that it was reading on the laptop screen. So as you can guess, combining a CCTV and camera into one is pretty amazing. So again, you have pretty much the same concepts. You can change the color mode with just the mode button. You can zoom in and out with the plus and minus button. You can actually move the camera around with this beautiful button, as you can probably see. So yeah, everything's the same, except it's just for a far viewing camera instead of a CCTV kind of camera. That's how to set up the eBot. That's how it works. That's pretty much the main features and functions. So now I'm gonna tell you guys what I think about it and how it works for me. So first things first, in terms of technology, this thing is amazing. I love that it can read things to you. That's probably one of my favorite parts about it is that you can take a picture of something with teeny, teeny, tiny font and get it to read, start and stop and pause and all that stuff to you and that you can go and access it in your menu and be able to actually look through like really small assignment sheets that they send you or look through documents. In the far viewing mode, you can also take pictures with the same buttons and stuff like that and again go in from your menu and view those. So that's really helpful if you need to take pictures of notes in your class or something like that. It's pretty much, you know, like saving notes. It's awesome. And this guy has a lot of memory, so you don't have to worry about it being taken up. I love that for its size, it does a lot. It's pretty lightweight in general, and you are able to actually bring it around to different classes. It sets up pretty fast from going on to off. It has a quick shutdown mode, and then it has like a main shutdown mode. It is a bit heavier, but again, for what it is, it's better than lugging a whole entire CCTV around with you, right? I love that it can actually hook into my laptop wirelessly, and I love that it doesn't need any wires to actually function. I love that the battery is pretty long lasting and you don't need to plug it into a wall wherever you go. It is pretty small generally and the weight actually does help it in terms of not falling off your desk because there is such a big stand where you actually put your papers, this thing isn't going to move at all. I've had a few cameras fall off my desk, I've had cameras that clamp into my desk and stick there but leave holes everywhere. This isn't going to do any of that. Now, when I was messing with it, it was a little difficult for me to hook it up initially. This guy has a pretty big learning curve to it and I'm still figuring out all the different functions it has, but it's better to have all those functions and taking a little bit of time learning them than not having the functions at all and not having the opportunity to use it for all the things you need it for. So learning curve, I mean it's a positive and a negative, right? But in general, I can easily see someone using this in university. They have made it to last a long time, to be pretty durable, to work well for us, and to do everything that we need a low vision device to do. 
So hope you guys liked this review and I hope that it was helpful and informative. I'm really looking forward to hopefully reviewing not only Zoom Text Fusion, but also the eSight glasses. So you gotta look forward to that because both of those are really, really cool uh, pieces of technology or programs and I can't wait to show you what those guys got. And thanks for watching guys, I guess I'll see you next time. Okay, bye!